Douglas Adams, the science fiction writer, uh, the English science fiction writer, said technology is stuff that doesn't work yet. Um, and the problem that lots of technology or things that we encounter in the world that we, we call technology is that it's now begun working. Um, when we break down on a motorway, um, we reach for our mobile phones and we're almost certain that we have it there and it becomes a sort of an important part of our um, safety routines. And so our relationships with, um, with these things that we call technology is changing and we're becoming more reliant on um, computers and as everyday objects that really inform and help our, um, the activities that we engage in. And that's no different in the world of therapy. Increasingly, therapists are going online or clients or potential clients are going online with a view to um, seeking access to support. So recent research would, into help-seeking behaviour would suggest that a majority of young people might look um, as a first point of call um, for support around mental health difficulties. They may go online and Google whether or not they can get support. And the statistics from organisations that offer um, email advice and support, like the Samaritans, have hundreds of thousands of people now contacting them um, with a view to accessing some kind of email help. So it's becoming hard to ignore that technology is really infiltrating the world um, of emotional health. And counsellors are having to engage with this as a topic. I think whether or not we like it or not, I think therapists are engaging with technology in the therapy room. Um, and this can take a multitude of forms. Some of it may be um, clients who talk about problems that they may have encountered, like cyberbullying. So the technology is the issue that they've come to talk about. Or it might be that they are... Um, I can think of one client I had who, who brought a, a phone and started showing me pictures of a, a loved one who had recently died. And it was a way of them sharing some of their connection with that person um, in the real world. And this was in face-to-face -face communication. Um, so it was, it was even within the realms that counsellors traditionally work and have traditionally worked, um, there is technology creeping in. And historically, we can see even within Freud's work, he used to write letters to some of his clients. So I think it's almost, we have this feeling that it's something new, but actually I think it has a legacy that goes back way beyond um, and even in the, the current history, during the 1960s, people were creating um, computer programs that mimicked the person-centred counselling. Um, or they were creating tape recordings that were offering guided self-help from a more cognitive behavioural frame. So technology has had its place within history for quite a long time. And it's almost continue to grow. And if we look in countries like England, it's now become uh, one of the recommended treatments. So if you uh, go to a GP and present with low mood and get a diagnosis around depression, it may be that your uh, prescribed treatment may be to um, have cogn computerized cognitive behavioral therapy um, as one of the recommended treatments by the health service. So this is become really big business and I guess really kind of an important part of what's happening within the therapeutic world and something that we can't ignore. Um, and the different approaches, so I think it's infiltrating all different forms of communication online, so computer mediated communication via um, common means such as email or synchronous communication, which is chat rooms and things that happen in a more immediate fashion, um, are becoming commonplace. And practitioners will often offer these services as an additional service to their maybe face-to-face -face service. We're also seeing group support in online forums. Um, and then developments in the world of kind of avatars and 
computer programs or websites such as Second Life beginning to have therapeutic presences. And we need to almost stay ahead of the game the, of the virtual reality headsets that are now starting to kind of come into, um, I suppose, people's awareness and um, will inevitably become part of kind of the therapeutic culture where we can be able to offer almost a virtual reality therapy um, setting. We're already seeing that for some treatments of um, trauma, particularly with um, military veterans, that people are using immersive techniques to really kind of support them in overcoming the traumas that they have, adhere, have suffered with in the battlefield. Um, so these technological kind of developments uh, are here and without doubt they're here to stay. Um, and counsellors or therapists need to stay abreast of that with a view to remaining confident or developing their own competence at communicating in these ways um, and being confident in their own competence. So for many years I think organisations and training programmes have been supporting counsellors to learn how to communicate and have emotional conversations um, solely via text. Um, so using things like emoticons or abbreviations um, and paying, paying attention to some of what might be viewed as non-textual communication, almost the speed that someone may have of, um, in responding to a particular email may give us an insight into their, their well-being. Um, one author talks about the idea of you, can, you, you have Freudian typos as opposed to maybe a Freudian slip where people can kind of uh, communicate and give things away in the text. And therapists are having to attune themselves and become, um, develop these different skills as a way of taking their um, traditional skills of developing a relationship face to face and then being able to transport that into an electronic means, whether or not that's email, chat rooms, um, using a video conference package, etc., etc. Um, and that, that's challenging, I think, for some counsellors. I think typically therapy has been about the kind of very intimate relationship of two people within a room and taking it into the realms of technology um, seems to put an immediate distance between two people. And so really these skills become important for us to um, be able to transfer these relationship skills and then um, apply them within a more virtual or electronic realm. And the good news, I think, is if you kind of look at the, the research around this topic, um, is that despite the apprehension or the reticence from counsellors, is that the feedback from um, clients and counsellors who work in this area is that it is actually possible to create strong therapeutic alliances um, online. And that outcome studies, although there are by no means as many as there are related to face-to-face -face therapy, uh, and it brings a whole new meaning to the idea of trying to control um, a therapeutic experimental design. Um, but the studies that have been conducted suggest that there are lots of positive outcomes occurring online and that strong therapeutic alliances and relationships can be built up online um, that can create constructive therapeutic change. Um, the addition to that is that it's also meeting the need um, for people who might not ordinarily seek, on, uh, seek emotional or psychological support. So the internet is becoming an access point for groups of people who may have ordinarily viewed therapy as something that they wouldn't engage in. Um, so in thinking about bringing that together, I, there's really the sense that technology is there um, it's something that is impacting upon psychology and therapy more broadly. Um, and counsellors 
are having to equip themselves, having to become mindful of the issues they may encounter, and they're having to develop new skills um, to really translate their existing skills into this forum. Um, and there's that sense that if they don't do that, then someone else will go into that area. Um, there have already been a number of kind of incidents that make the news where people have offered support in the, under the auspices of being a therapist or a counsellor or a psychologist, where they've been offering support that hasn't been helpful. Um, so I think there's an ethical kind of point um, or an ethical kind of decision for therapists to also lead and become attuned to this environment.